in this video, we're going to answer the question, the age old question of why there's a concept of default gateway versus default route versus default network and how exactly do they all fit in together. And this video is going to address exactly that. So let's get started. I've got this beautiful little network with three routers. We've got some loopback interfaces on R1, R2, and R3 and the networks between them. So the 10 network here, the 23 network here, and the last octet of each router is its router number. So dot one for R1, dot two for R2, dot three for R3 and so forth. Let's take a look and see what routing protocols we have in place. Show IP protocols. Absolutely nothing. No RIP, no OSPF, no EAGRP, no BGP, no ISIS, or any other routing protocol that you may want to uh, create. So no routing protocols are running. I want to walk through the default commands for routing. So to start off, let's go in and let's modify and take a look at the routing table of R2. Now on R2, it's pretty straightforward because there's no routing protocols yet. But if we go into configuration mode, and IP routing by default is on, on the routers. What does that mean? It means they're willing to route packets. Unlike a PC that has one interface and doesn't route between two interfaces, it's an end device. So what we could do is do a show IP route, and let's just take a look here for a moment. We've got a directly connected network of two. That's this loop back up here. We are directly connected to the 23 network, which is over here. And check this out. How come it puts two lines for 23? Here's the reason. 23 is a class A address. We all know that. It's in the range. But we're not using the default mask. And because of that, it says, okay, I've got the 23 network. It's subnetted into a slash 24. And here's the literal network itself. It's the 2300 network with 24 bits. See, we didn't get two lines for the two network because we're only using an 8-bit mask. It's a class A network. That's why we have just one line for it. Then we go down to the 10 network. How can we have two lines there? It's because we're doing custom subnetting. 10 is a class A address. We're using a slash 24, and here's the network. So if, there, it was, if this was network 10.1.2, 10.1.2 would show right here. So we've got three directly connected networks, one on the left, the one on the right, and this guy right here. I'd like to show you a little trick. It's called IP default gateway. And you might say, now, Keith, what's that going to do for me? Well, the answer is it's not going to do anything for us. If we just go up, I just did an IP default gateway command. If we do a show IP route, take a look. Nothing has changed. We use this command. I'll highlight it. We said, Mr. Router IP default gateway is 23003, which is our three's IP address. And our routing table didn't change. This command right here highlighted is only used for devices that do not run IP routing or are currently not supporting IP routing. What do you mean, Keith? Who would do that? Well, think of a layer two switch, a low end layer two switch that doesn't do layer three routing. A layer two switch has a management IP address. The reason we use this command on a layer two switch is so it can re reply and respond as we manage it. So we telnet into the switch, we're coming in from a different network, it needs to know its default gateway. So you can, if you have a piece of paper and something to write with, I'd encourage you to jot down right now that whenever you see the command IP default gateway, it's only useful, only applies, only really works on a device that does not support IP routing. Now, let me demonstrate that. Let's turn off IP routing on this router and look at the same output again. So IP routing is on, so we're going to disable IP routing with no IP routing. And now, if we do a show IP route, take a look at the results. Now, with the show IP route, you'll notice the entire routing table is gone up here. Why? Because we're no longer supporting routing. So by turning off routing, uh, we now have use for the default gateway. So the command default gateway and you applying it only works and only is useful, only means anything if IP routing is turned off, which on a low end layer two switch, it doesn't support routing. That's a perfect place for it. So let's see if this works. Let's just do a ping over to R3. In fact, R3 has this beautiful loop back up here, 3333. Let's see if our default gateway will work. So we'll do a ping because I'm in configuration mode to 3333. And sure enough, the packets were forwarded to the default gateway, R3, and then they were able to reach him. Now, if we turn routing back on, in fact, let's just do a little cleanup real quick. And we'll, uh, yeah, let's turn, let's turn on IP routing again, IP routing. And let's do that same ping again. Check this out. 
I turned on IP routing, but now that default gateway, because routing is enabled, no longer applies. So if we look at the routing table on R2, it says I have no clue how to get to the 333 network or 3 anything for that matter, because it's not in my routing table. So let's go ahead and clean up the default gateway because we don't need it. So we turned on IP routing. I'm just going to go back in and take off the IP default gateway command. Again, why? Because we absolutely 100% do not need it on a router that supports IP routing. Default gateway is only for devices that don't support IP routing. Now, what is the right way to put on a default route on a router statically? And if IP routing is enabled, which it is by default on iOS routers, we would use a static route. A static route is what we'd use for to train this router. Hey, listen, Mr. R2, if you don't know how to reach a given destination network, it's not in your routing table, go ahead and forward it to this IP address, maybe 23003 again. So we'll say IP route quad zeros space quad zeros, which is the default route. Go ahead and send it to 23003. Now, if R2 needs to ping, he'll go ahead and forward it over to 23003 if he needs to ping any networks that are not in his routing table. So let's take a quick peek at that as well. So we'll do a do show IP route again. And I'm just going to say begin where the keyword gateway shows up. So we don't have to look at all the key, the um, the Dick Tracy decoder symbols for it. And then they'll go ahead and do a ping. So before we launch the ping, here's our routing table. We have our statically connect, we have our directly connected networks, the 23, the two, the 10, and we have this beautiful static route right here. It's our default route. Also, if you'll notice, it says gateway of last resort is 23003. So if we need to forward a packet to three something, because it's not directly in our routing table, we will default and go ahead and use 23003, and hopefully that'll work. Now that's good and that's bad. Check this out. What happens if we try to ping 55.55.55? .55 well, if we try to ping that IP address, I'll put in four octets to make it work. If we try to ping that IP address, R2 says, oh, I need to reach the 55 network. It's not local. I don't have a route for it. I'll send it to my default gateway. So he's going to forward it to R3, and if R3 doesn't have a route, to the 55 network, which in this topology it doesn't, R5 is going to, or R3 is going to send an ICMP unreachable message saying, I can't get there from here. And that's what this U is representing, an ICMP unreachable message, where R3 is simply saying, you know what? I've got no route for it. I've got no default route, and I'm done. I'm done with you. Here's your uh, message. Have a nice day. Try again. And guess what? This router did try again. He actually sent five ICMP requests and got responses to at least three of them and had times out, timeouts on the other two. We can look at a packet tracer and take a look at the exact details of that, but that's what's happening. We had five pings that went out, they all went to R3, and R3 didn't know how to reach any of them. All right, so let's go ahead and we put the static route in. Let's take that static route back out because I wanna show you the next piece, and the next piece is the IP default network command. So what have we covered so far? We covered the default gateway command, which is used on a device that is not capable or configured for IP routing. We looked at the default route command, meaning the IP route 0000. And the third piece is we want to take a look at something really cool called the default network statement. I say it's cool. It's really more mysterious than cool. Let's just go ahead and just verify our current routing as it is. So we'll do a do show IP route and we'll begin at the line gateway so we don't have to see the whole output, just the specific routes that we currently have. I just want to verify we don't have a default route anymore. Okay, so gateway of last resort is not set. There's no static route, no default route. So let's add a simple static route. Now this static route we're going to add is simply going to point. It's going to say, Dear Mr. R2, if you need to reach three anything, go ahead and use 2300 three as your next hop. So that's pretty straightforward, a simple static route. Now the default route we created earlier, it was also a static route, but it was for everything that didn't match, to, didn't match explicitly in the routing table. This one is an explicit static route only for the three network. So if we wanted to ping, so we'll ping and it works great. The router says, okay, let's take a look at our routing table. He says to get to the three network, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to 23003. It's his problem after that. 
20th, and this router gets the packet, says, oh, I'm directly connected, it's me, and it forwards the packet to itself, to its loopback interface. So the next thing I'd like to do is let's go ahead and take that beautiful route, this one that's highlighted right here, and let's tell R2 this, dear Mr. R2, if you have a route to the three network, I would also like to have you use that route as your default gateway. And the R2 is gonna say, no problem. If I have the three network, I'll use that same route in my routing table as the default route, and I'll make it my gateway of last resort right here. So how do we configure that? That one's really easy. To tell the router that that specific route, the three network should be the default route, we simply go into global config, which we're already there, and we say IP default dash network space, and you list that network. That's it. And the router will say, well, if I have a classful route to the three network, so it's classful, class A, B, and C boundaries are very important for this to work, it's gonna say, great, IP default network three, if I have the three network, I will make that my new gateway of last resort. That's really all there is to it. You're simply telling router two, look through your routing table, if you have a specific route to that network, I'm talking about this guy right here, the 300, literally the classful 8-bit 300 network, that will be your gateway of last resort. And that's all I did, check it out. There's our gateway of last resort. How did we get it? We said IP default network 3000. It looked in its routing table. See that little asterisk right there? That means it's a candidate, not like on Lost, but a candidate like in, hey, this route has the potential to be the default route. And that's why you have the asterisk. Now what happens if you have two or three possible candidates with IP default network, you can only have one winner. So let's go ahead and kick it up a little bit and let's add another static route and let's also go ahead and tell that second static route that it can also be a candidate. And we're all, currently we have a static route that goes to the three network. How about adding a static route that says how to reach the one network? Let's do that next. So we'll go into, we're in configuration mode and we'll say, I wanna add a static route to reach the one network Again, I want to point out that the default network statement is really focused on classful boundaries. So be aware that if you put in a default network statement that's not classful, your results may vary. And when we get to routing protocols and adding these into routing protocols, there's more variables as well. So here's a static route to the one network saying use 10.0.0.1 as the next hop. And let's just verify that, that we have that in the routing table. There it is. So we've got the 100-8 network as a static route, perfect. And then we're gonna tell the router, hey, that static route of 1000, that network is going to be the default network. So now we'll have two, and the command is the same, IP default network, and the router says, okay, I'll just search through my routing table, and if I find that route, I'm gonna go ahead and use it as my default gateway. Now here's the problem. Let's say two people are running for president. Only one is going to win. That's how default network works also. With IP, with the static routes for quad zero, a static IP route for default, you can have multiple. But with the default network statement, only one can win. So if we take a look at the routing table now, here's a show IP route of the entire routing table. Take a look at this. We've got the three network as a candidate because we said IP default network for three earlier. And we also have the one network as a candidate default route because we just listed it as well as a possible candidate. Now who's gonna win? This is the interesting part. The way the router picks the winner, which happens to be 10001, is based on the order that the routes appear in the routing table. And it's kind of wacky because you'll notice we have one, two, three, 23, 10. They are not always going to be in numerical order as shown right here as well. So the very first candidate that it sees in the routing table is the one that it's gonna use as its gateway of last resort. So let's do a quick review of what we've learned. The default gateway command is used on a device like a layer two switch or a router with IP routing turned off so it can use that IP address as a default gateway. The IP route to 0000, the static IP default route is used on a router where IP routing is enabled. 
And if we have a static route, that's going to show up here as well if it's the default route. If we don't have static routes for the default and we use the default network, network statement, we're simply telling the router, hey, listen, if you don't have a route in your routing table, a specific route for, like, say, the 55 network, go ahead and use your default network as the interface and next top to use. So in this case, right here, because we said IP default network 1000, the router looked at its routing table and said, oh, I've got a 100 route that I'm going to mark it as a candidate. It installs that as the gateway of last resort, and it uses it. So that's the three options. There's a lot of history. A long time ago, we really cared about classful boundaries, and that's the root for this command, by the way. If you're playing with the default network statement and it's not working for you, I would encourage you to look at your classful boundaries. If you have class A addresses with 24-bit masks, or if you put a network statement in for a non-classful boundary network you're looking for, you're going to have different results than what you've seen here. So if you want to practice with this, I would start off with nice, easy, simple static routes that point to classful boundaries. So this network right here, whether it's 1110 with a 24-bit mask or 1100 with a 16-bit mask or 1000 with an 8-bit mask for your static routes and your and your default network statements, I want you to point to classful boundaries. That's what I did in this example to make it work correctly. So you use 1000 slash 8 as your static route, and you'd point to 100 as your default network. I'd encourage you to practice with this. I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it, especially in the CCNA environment. In the CCNP environment, it'll become a little bit more important, but mostly these default network statements, they are older than you know old they are really really ancient and they're legacy and we really don't use them anymore but if you're in certification i get it you have, you want to understand how they work and what they do and that's what this tutorial was built to do i appreciate you watching and have a great great rest of the day